Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Magic and Miracles, where you learn how to be the magician of your life. My name is Anna, and I'm your most favorite manifestation coach under the sun and anywhere on the internet because nobody cares as much about their clients like I do, and nobody, but nobody spends as much time on their clients like I do and has the type of coaching like I do. I coach primarily in audio exchange as well as phone sessions. The two coaching packages that I offer are on my website. The link is below and also individually the links for those coaching packages are below. Okay. I cover everything in my coaching, started starting with childhood, going into adolescence, college years, what have you, up all the way up until today. The reason why I do it so thoroughly is because I want to understand the makeup of your mind, your belief system, which is really, really important in my coaching. That's what my coaching centers around. I wish more people were talking about this rather than affirmations all goddamn long. Um, uh, go <laughs> I cannot understand how people think that they will achieve something with affirmations without getting to know their belief system, quite frankly. We dive very deep in, in my coaching. I want to understand what you believe about yourself, about money, about SPs, all aspects of your life. I do not coach just in SP. This is just a subject that a lot of people are interested in. However, my audio slash videos can be applied just about to any area of your life. With the exception, I would say, like the other day I got a, um, a question about health. Can you talk about health? I think this is a very specific area because of the fact of um, the specificity of your whatever it is you're going through. So I cannot just discuss health in general. You need to come into my coaching or at the very least come consult with me for an hour. This I also offer. Um, on my website, if you want to make up your mind that I'm your kind of coach before signing up for the month with me, um, you can do that. I do recommend two to three months in coaching with me to completely cover the entire ground of my program. Okay, so in the audio exchange uh, situation, we exchange audios back and forth. Your audio has to be 20 minute max. I review it. I um, transcribe it in my own way by hand, I take my notations, and then I record the analysis back to you. I usually respond within a day or two. In the case of um, audio unlimited, excuse me, telephone sessions unlimited um, package, we correspond in the same manner, but on the telephone for an hour. Okay, so two to three times this way a week, I correspond with all of my clients. If you don't respond to my audio, my reply to your reply right away, that's on you, but I respond within a day or two. I just need time to really absorb it, to really listen to everything you're saying to me, to transcribe it, like I said, um, and then really just reply, you know, having thought about what I really want to say here. In the case of the, um, the telephone session package for coaching, it's um, me basically hanging up once we're done with our session and then going back and listening to our session and transcribing that, which takes a lot longer because it's an hour and thus the fee is higher, Okay. Also, the phone sessions are recorded, like I said, um, as per your um, permission. However, it is simply for my notes and for posterity. If I want to listen back to it more than once or, you know, listen back to it maybe uh, two weeks into it after looking for some, some kind of like information there, that's what I need it for. You need to sign the coaching agreement once you book me. Um, it basically states I am not a psychiatrist or psychologist or therapist. I am a coach. You don't get to be disrespectful. You don't get to rebuttal my methods. You need to respect the rules of the coaching in the case of audio exchange, that it needs to be one audio at a time, 20 minute max, okay? Unless I ask you to, you also cannot be on any legal drugs, and I really don't mean um, marijuana. Um, and of course, everything is confidential in my coaching. Um, however, the clause does state that if you become a danger to yourself or danger to me uh, or explicitly communicate to me that you could be danger to somebody else, 
um, this um, it does not apply. Okay, then I I I have the um, basically the moral and the legal obligation to report the situation. So therefore, if you really feel like you have a condition of another kind. Um, that cannot be helped in co coaching, you really need a therapist. Um, coach cannot help you. Uh, in my coaching, it's a boot camp. I will push your buttons. I will demand the best out of you. And I will really tell you like it is. I'm a very straightforward coach, very honest. Um, and so, like I said, if you have a condition of some kind where you cannot take criticism or you, you'll get upset or you start rebottling me and being disrespectful, this is not for you. This has happened to me a couple of times, um, not too many, thank goodness. However, I just wanted to point that out. I think some people confuse coaching with therapy, okay? I come here to work on you to get you the results and manifestation, okay? Not to, not to diagnose you and not to treat some kind of a dysfunction. If you have any questions about my coaching, you can email me. I also offer seminars for up to 10 people. If it's less people or more people we can discuss, you can just email me, okay? All right, today's subject is how to be the center of your SP's world. Okay, so like I say, a lot of you come to me with your SP problems initially, and then I find out that actually just about everything else in your world is kind of like out of whack because it's not just one thing, it's usually everything, okay? There may be an area or two in your life that's doing pretty good, but it could be better. It always could be better. Now, the idea here is that a lot of people, most people in the SP community, the people who watch endless videos on um, YouTube have this... Um, needy approach to this problem, have this um, chasing approach, a desperation kind of feeling. And my job here, honestly, it when I became aware of the situation on YouTube, I really just became interested in discussing it because to me, it is so easily fixable if you understand how to look at things. Okay, most of you, I would, I would put my money on it because a lot, I, I've now coached a lot of people off of YouTube, okay, are coming in with this distorted idea that somehow you are the one who's not wanted, you have been left behind, you are less than, um, you don't deserve something, okay, and that is just not true. What you have been taught to believe about yourself, which is why I go over beliefs in detail, starting with childhood and what you observed and what you have been taught by others through your experiences since growing up, that is what is at play. And so to correct the entire situation, you really need to take a good look at yourself. Who's creating the situation? Who's participating in this? You are creating it, and not only are you creating it, you're participating in it, okay? Because you think this is out of your control. Somehow, you're under the impression that this is just what's going on, and I have, I have no control here. This is just the way it is. Bullshit, okay? That you are under the impression, and you believe that things are out of control, and you cannot do anything about it. That part is true. However, it is not true that you cannot do anything about it. It's the way you think, okay? And subsequently feel your self-esteem, in other words. That's where it all comes from. There, I just gave it to you. This is why belief work is so important. This is why processing the emotions behind the incidents that have caused you trauma, drama, panorama is so important. This is why understanding where you come from is of paramount importance. It just is. Because once you understand that it isn't that the SP left, okay, is that you made them disappear. It's not that the ESP prefers a third party, is that you made that third party appear. It's not that 
they don't um, think that you're, you know, the, the greatest person that have, they have ever met. It's that you don't think so. And it echoes back into the reality where you experience them not displaying, um, them thinking that you're the greatest thing on earth. You're playing this game with yourself the entire time, essentially. And so <clears throat> the idea here is to completely reverse the situation on its head and start thinking differently. And you cannot start thinking differently if you don't believe certain things about yourself. You have to first start believing different things about you in order to think differently. Okay, so you want to be the center of your SP's world. You want their undivided attention at all time. You want the, to be their number one priority. Have them in the palm of your hand, all that stuff. It's entirely up to you. It's not up to them. Okay, it really, really is not. It's up to you to command, to decide that you're going to change this dynamic entirely and to create a new version of events, a new version of your SP, a new version of events. Okay, your perception and your interpretation of events up until today is really what matters. If you're interpreting things like you're undesirable, you're undesirable. Okay, if you're interpreting things like they left you and somebody else is way better than you, that's what's going on in your reality. But you can shift your thinking, you can shift your perception and interpretation of events and the reality will start changing right in front of your eyes. Okay, for example, you right now may be obsessed with somebody looking them up on social media, obsessing over them, you know, um, scripting in your own way and calling, calling that, you know, an attempt at manifesting, which it's not if you haven't processed what you believe, okay? You cannot start scripting if you don't believe what you're scripting, parenthesis here. But what you're really not realizing is that if you change your perception and say, I'm not obsessed. They're obsessed with me. Okay. I'm upset for nothing. I'm just picking up on their emotions. I'm so in tune with this person. I'm picking up on their emotions and I'm perfectly translating them as my own feelings. A lot of people do this, by the way, this is not a joke. A lot of people, um, perceive their emotions like their own because they're picking up, they're receiving their th the thought transmission from their SP. A lot of clients that come to my coaching are, for example, empath. And empath has this, have this ability, which is quite incredible. Um, I've discovered it very early on when I was very young. I, I mean, I must have been like, I don't know, 12, 13, something like this, where I can literally tell what the person is thinking just by looking at them. Or I can think of somebody and they will call me or, um, or, or, or I just detect what they're thinking. I can think of someone and I can tune in into their thoughts. A lot of you are doing this and perceiving those thoughts and emotions as your own. Now, what if you completely, like I said, turn it on its head and started thinking, wow, what I'm feeling right now is actually not, a, not me. This is what I'm picking up over here. Okay, this is my SP actually obsessing over me, which is why I'm so obsessed, which would make sense because there's no one way love in the universe. If you look warm towards somebody, they are lukewarm about you. Okay, it doesn't exist that just one person took it upon themselves and is just like obsessing over somebody or thinking nonstop about them. I think of people all the time. I don't choose to think of them sometimes, but I think of uh, certain people all the time and then they call me or they text me or they, you know, they email me something. And, and it's kind of like this invisible internet that is going on the entire time um, in the quantum field, okay? And so in essence, a lot of you really, truly are making too much of this too difficult. You're making this too difficult. You are interpreting things in the worst way and thus you're creating the outcome that is the worst for you, if that makes any sense. If you really start interpreting things in your favor constantly, Okay, if you if you have this belief, everything is turning in, in my favor, everything is happening in my favor, even though things right now may look like, quite frankly, shit. 
On the surface, logically, the logical mind will tell you, look, they left, they're not talking to me, they blocked me, they're with a third party, they married somebody else, la 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 What I want is not here, essentially. Okay, that's one point of view. Another point of view is that you needed the separation from this SP to realize who the fuck you are. A lot of you have the need to do that because a lot of you, if you're coming off of this, uh, you know, separation or divorce or breakup or whatever it is, feeling needy, feeling really alone, feeling uh, destroyed, feeling desperate, you're not where you want to be. You're in no position to manifest what you want to manifest. I hate to break it to you. It's just the truth. There is no way you will manifest your SP or anything for that matter if you are in on that frequency of desperation. So your job is you. If somebody leaves and they leave and you, your life falls apart, something's wrong with you, not with them. Something is out of whack with you. You should be like a Central Park oak tree. I don't give a fuck. My life still goes on. My life is beautiful. Everything is intact. I have my business. I have my job. I have my career. I have my whatever, passions, friends, this, that, any other. Are you sad? Yeah, obviously. You know, if somebody leaves, yeah, of course. But should it be the end of the world? Should you continue like obsessing over this person and watch 300 million YouTube videos? Absolutely fucking not. Your number one job, if that's where you are, you really need to go to town working on yourself. And dis rediscovering for the first time, maybe in, in, in all of your life, who it is that you are. Who the fuck are you? Have you ever thought about this? And I guarantee you, if you go through my coaching, if you do this work correctly, you will understand that you're not at all the person that you thought you were in a good way. You thought you're this minuscule little person who was left behind tragically, this, that, any other. But now you'll start realizing you have so, so much potential. You have so much strength inside, so much love, so much passion, so much enthusiasm, so much to give to the world, not just to, just to this SP, to the world, sharing your genius, okay? That, to me, is way more important than talking about some fucking SP, quite frankly, okay? But see, here's the, 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 the paradox. Once you start investing in yourself, and becoming this person who, quite frankly, doesn't give a fuck if the SP leaves, let them leave. Let them explore a little bit and, and see what's out there. Nothing really worth looking at, okay? <laughs> because let's face it, you're the golden Buddha and you're the center of their world. You, if you're going on of this assumption, you have nothing to be afraid of. You're like, yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, go for it. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun, trust me. Okay, they'll be calling you the next day or the next, like, whatever, the next couple of uh, days or the next week and begging you, begging you to come back. Whereas if you start freaking out, even energetically, start begging or chasing even energetically and watching 300 million um, videos on YouTube, that shit isn't going to happen. You will prolong it and prolong it and prolong it. Why? Because you're not on your own team. Because you're playing this desperate person. You're playing into this uh, completely distorted idea that somehow you're not worthy of what you want. Why are you doing that? I don't know. But you have to ask these questions because there are certain beliefs that correspond this kind of behavior. If you believed that you are the center of your world, that you are the center of anybody's world that you want to have in your life, you wouldn't be behaving this way. You wouldn't even be watching these videos on YouTube, okay? You wouldn't care. You would not care. You'd be just like sitting there sipping your chamomile tea or black, black currant tea. <laughs> Or champagne, or champagne if you drink like late at night, like, yeah, okay, it's only a matter of time. Let's just see how long it takes them to realize how stupid they were to, uh, to up and leave and this and that. But you see, that's the confidence. If you don't have this confidence, if you're chasing them energetically, if you're crying in the corner, that is not going to happen to you. I'm sorry to say it. I'm completely blunt, and I think you'd rather hear the truth than be, you know, sugarcoated for. You can play so many different parts in life. 
I'd rather you play the part of a strong, confident person who, who knows that all all the things that they want is is already yours because it's the truth. Okay, the world where everything goes your way, it it already exists, not even a millimeter away. In the parallel reality where you finally decide to get off your ass and start believing different things. Start investing in yourself, in coaching, or starting a business, or going to the gym, or eating right, or whatever else you smell the roses, go do the pedicures and manicures. Investing in yourself is the highest form of self-love, and is the best thing that you'll ever do in your life. Sitting there and worrying about one little person, no thank you. Never should you do that. Why? Because what happens, it backfires on you. This person feels this energetic um, chasing. So it, it has to be that they do because universe has no secrets. Quantum field has no secrets. If they feel you being needy, feel you chasing them energetically, they're running away. It's just physics, just quantum physics. There's nothing to it. If you're sitting there like a golden Buddha in the center of your world, everything comes to you. And you're not running after anything and you're confident in, in your assumption that everything is already yours. They will run back to you in a split of a second. And you will learn your lesson once and for all how not to chase anybody or anything. And that's when you become the center of their world permanently. Unless you change again and start chasing. Okay, it's just the arrows of the energy have, have to constantly be on you and not outwards. If it's outwards, you're chasing. If it's inwards, they're chasing you. Simple, okay? Trying too hard, begging, pleading, worrying brings zero results, okay? Having fun makes everything happen. Having fun investing in yourself, having fun building a new business, having fun going shopping, having fun cooking something new, having fun watching stand-up comedy, having fun going out with your friends, having fun, having fun, having fun, having fun uh, reading a new book, whatever, having fun doing coaching with Anna. <laughs> It is fun, but it's a boot camp. I'm not going to lie. You need to come prepared to work. It's still fun, though, to discover things about you that were laying there dormant for such a long time, and you're walking around frustrated. Why the fuck my life doesn't work? Well, because there's some things to work on. That's why. I think that's the most fun. I think, the, honestly, to me, personally, the most fun is figure out what the fuck doesn't work and then make it work permanently. Just permanently knowing how to make it work. And manifestation is about making things work all in your favor constantly, nonstop. Okay? But it doesn't happen if you think of yourself less. You have to start deciding that you're the god of your reality, that you're the golden Buddha. Nobody else is in the center of their world, your SP's world, or your world, or anybody else's world in your world. Okay? If that makes any sense. If it's important to you, if this person is important to you, you're the center of, of, your, of their world. Period. You're important to them. You're the number one priority. In particular, your SP. And the very reason that it kind of isn't so right now is because you don't think that you are. So if you, if you don't think that you're the center of their world, well, they oblige you and they obey you and that's what transpires. A person who is confident knows that they're the center of their world. A person who doesn't has the need to chase and worry, okay? The longer it takes you to understand and to really notice what I just told you, the longer it will take you or short, the shorter time it will take you to manifest actually whatever you want in your life, but also your SP. And to have them, like in, like I said, in the palm of your hand, permanently so. When you really like understand this situation, how it really works, you never go back. When you really download this principle that if I'm chasing, I'm repelling. If I'm worrying, I'm repelling. If I know it's mine, if I know they're mine, they're mine. There's nothing to do. If you never got out of bed, okay, I already gave this kind of like example. If you never got out of bed tomorrow for a week, you didn't shower, didn't brush your teeth, 
<laughs> All you did was just like watch movies and eat food. Okay, but in mentally, internally, you became the most confident person, expecting great things, magnificent things to turn around, money to drop out of the sky, SP to come back to you, this and that. I hope you shower before that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you would make that happen without doing anything, nothing, not sending one text, not doing, not worrying, not, not nothing, nothing in the 3D has to happen for you to receive those things. All, all the stuff that you need to do is going on in your mind. And so if you're thinking I'm the center of their world, they're realizing it now, I am all they, are, they ever need. I am the one that they really want to have for the rest of their life. They don't see anybody, you know, the way that they see me. I am the only one for them. Every other person is kind of like repulsive towards them. Now, listen, be kind when you proclaim these situations. Everything you say, by the way, it's like a, it's like a magic trick. It's not a magic trick. It's a magic spell, rather. It's a spell. This is why, you know, whatever you're thinking, the beliefs that you're subconsciously thinking that you're not even aware of are so powerful because on automatic pilot, you're thinking certain things. The idea is to discover what those are. And so if you're saying these things out loud, they're becoming true. Okay. So if before it wasn't true, if you're just saying, I'm the center of their world, they're repulsed by everybody else. They don't want anybody else but me. I know before, like it, it was everybody else was before me. I, I was the last one on the list or on his list or her list. But now I'm on top, on top of the list and I, I am the fucking list. That's what will become. You're literally speaking it into existence mentally or verbally. Okay. But if you're saying other things, if you're saying worried things, Oh my God, I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I don't know if they will come back. Oh my God, what if they found somebody else? Oh my God, what if? What if? This is also creating. This is creation. You're mentally affirming something else. This is why countering it, like beating it to, you know, with a hammer into your mind with 10,000 affirmations doesn't work because the rest of the time you're thinking something completely different. So rather than muscling it in, you need to get to know what you're thinking most of the time and why that is that you're thinking that. In the minute that you fuse yourself with this new person who thinks differently and knows it for a fact, knows it like innately on a cellular level, knows it for a fact, I am the center of their world, there's nobody but me, all they care about is me. Yes, before it wasn't so, but now I'm choosing a different parallel reality in which this is so. And that's what I'm believing. That person is changed. In that second, in that minute, you are fusing yourself with that parallel reality in which that is so and has always been so. But you see, the beliefs that you're harboring literally create your reality because of the frequency you're on. You need to change the frequency through your belief work. It's kind of like you cannot reside on any other frequency other than your beliefs. True story, which is why it's so important. If you just keep in mind, this is an illusion anyway. This world is an illusion. And the only one really, the master here is you in the middle of the world, quite literally. And this is always has been true. You're already the center of the world. And if you just pay attention to what the master is thinking and how you are interpreting reality, this will transform your world forever. Thank you very much for listening. All the information from me is below. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.